So Dave, we're on our project here. Yes. So in any project, you, if you're going to be a re-roof or tear, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you need to assess the situation. As it yes. Works. What are some things contractors should be looking for if they're looking at a roof for your re-roof, tear, whatever the case may be? What's the first thing really you should be doing? Well, really the first thing is, what does a contract or the owner want? Does he want tear-off? Does he want coating? Does he want right. a re-roof, right? First thing is you have to do a core cut, number one, to see how many roofs are on. What else is that going to tell you? Well, it's going to tell you what the deck is. And then how long your fasteners got to be. Yeah. You always take one core cut in a low spot, one core cut in a high spot, and then random. What if you have several different levels of roof? Oh. You better be core cut. Absolutely every level. So in our specification, what is what do we call it in our specs? How many core cuts per, was it one per? Three per hundred squares, one per each additional hundred. Hundred squares after yeah. that. So it'd be four on this one. And like you said, you just don't want a core cut. Obviously, a good place to cork up would probably be around a drain, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, if there's any leak issues. Right. Since we don't have a drain on this, I would go down by the gutter. Yeah. You know, and you're going to be looking for moisture. That's going to tell yes. you any moisture. So, speaking of moisture, and again, in our specification, we call 25% of the roof, you got to tear that roof off. Correct. Now, is that a dead fast rule? No. I mean... Let's say like 20% and it's scattered all across yeah, the roof. You right. better off just tear the roof off. But now, having said that, let's say that but we've got maybe five feet up from that wall is all soaking wet. Oh. The rest is dry. Yeah. And that's over 25%. Right. I mean, again, it's up to the contractor. You know, maybe I can tear off that area, replace it, and not have to tear off the rest of the building. Perfect. So, again, uh, every Just job. Just bring it up to the, to the level of what you have yeah. and go from there. Every job's going to be different. Yep. So, what, let's say what happens if we core cut this roof and there's multiple roofs on this. Recovers, Recovers out the window. Out the window. So yeah. You're going to have to tear that roof off. Yeah, tear it off or come back and just coat it again because okay. coating is a maintenance. On our other projects, other videos, we have videos how to do a car cut. Yes. yes. So if anybody's never seen one, feel free to go look at our other videos, other projects. We've actually done a core cut, how to do one, how to seal it back up. Yep. Then they're done that. So core cut is one way. What's the ultimate way to actually investigate a roof if there's leaks? Infrared. Infrared. Right. And you know, if you, if you do have multiple leaks in the building, infrared may be the best way because now you can take sections, maybe a two square here, 10 square there, and you don't have to tear off the whole roof. You know, one thing, you know, when I first walk on a roof, I'm looking at a roof to bid for, mm -hmm. to tear off or whatever. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look around how many repairs are done on that roof. Now this roof, there's there's some minor repairs here and there. It doesn't look like nothing drastic. No. Maybe it's leaked here and there. It doesn't look like it's that bad. Mm -mm. You know, ponding water, like down along this roof edge. From the, from yeah. the HVAC. And that could be easily solved by piping it down to the gutter. You know, Correct. That's why it's all ponding right there. Mm -hmm. So we got some low spots. Yeah. Obviously, we don't want ponding water, but on TPO, it's not a big issue. No, it's not. But again, it's roofing. We want to try and get rid of as much of the water as we can. Mm -hmm. and plus, the building owner is paying us a lot of money for his roof. He does, he's going to ask, why you got all this water on my roof? Right. So I don't see a big issue with what we've got going on. I mean, you can see down here was ponding a little. It's not yeah. that bad. No. And there's ways you can alleviate some of that, too. Well, we have really good slope to this roof anyway. Yeah. So. And I've, I've seen instances where guys have, you know, a bit of job. You've got ponding water in the middle of the roof. Well, they put tapered on it. Move now it. you're just moving the ponding water to so that's something else you got to consider. Right. You know, another thing is like wall flashings or curb flashings, mm -hmm. any type of penetration flashing. What's our minimum wall flashing height? Minimum flashing height is eight inches, eight be inches it on a wall anything, or a curb. Right? So if you're going to do a re-roof and add additional insulation. Oh, that you know, definitely you comes into check, play. Like our, our curb flashing here, you know, we're nine, nine and a half, ten inches. Yeah. And we're not adding any insulation. No. So that's perfect. So let me ask you a question. Let's say we're coming in adding maybe multiple layers, maybe four inches of insulation. Well, if you're going to do that and you're doing an overlay, then you kick it back to the owner and say, per the specifications, it has to be eight inches, eight inches high. So now, now you got to raise the units. You got to re re rebuild these curbs. Right. So another scenario is, let's say you're right at the eight inch mark. This is where they, the contractor really needs to reach out to the area inspector. Let's say this unit's up there. This roof's draining down towards the. So you're going to get more water down here. If it's up there, it's probably not that big of an issue. Right. Versus down here, mm -hmm. you're you're pushing that threshold. Yep. Could be an issue down here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. You know, other things look at any penetrations that are not being used. Oh, yeah. Get rid of them. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Because um, there's just a leak waiting to happen. Wall flashing height, in our specification, if the wall flashings are tight, mm -hmm. you can go over top of those. Right. If there's blisters, that type of thing, you're probably going to have to remove those wall flashings. Correct. Any blisters in the middle of the roof, you might have to get rid of, that type of thing. Especially if you're doing an overlay. Yeah. So, done our roof assessment, and we've done our core cuts. We're and pretty we, we can overlay this. We can overlay this roof. Okay. We talked about, in the, our first episode, we have multiple systems we're going to be installing on mm -hmm. this. One of the systems, we're going to utilize fleece and low-rise foam. Right. So, we need to really do a shovel test to make sure that the adhesion to low-rise is going to adhere to this existing roof. Right. If it comes up, 
without breaking the board, it'll probably have coating on it, which means the coating is not stuck that well to this. So we're only as good as what we're sticking to. So that's going to rule out using any low rise foam. Correct. So there's other options you can do mechanically attach that type of system. Yeah. So, so on and so forth. You want to explain how we go about doing a shovel test, which we have right behind us here. A shovel test is done with a, approximately a two foot by two foot square of insulation. ISO usually bead application. 12 inches on center. For the insulation. For the insulation. Right. Put our beads, set our insulation in, weight the insulation, wait two hours, come back with a shovel, go under and see if we can pop it. So what are we looking for when that, for we're, a failure? For a failure, where the, the low rise is not going to adhere. So if we do the shovel oh. test, everything just comes up. Everything comes up, it's, it's you can't do that. You gotta go Some, to another system. Something's gonna pass and when we're breaking, the board's actually gonna break. Right. What about if we're doing fleece directly to this? What, how do you do that? Test? You still do the board okay? because that is an adhesion test. So right here, we've already done, we utilize our low-rise foam. So basically, I'm going to come in here and take a flat shovel. You tell me, Dave, is this a pass or a fail? I would say that's a pass. So it's literally breaking the board. Right, and that is what you want. If that were to fail, we'd be able to pick that board, whole entire board right up, and probably pull the coating up right inside. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm not doing that one. Do you want to pull it out? Not really, but I can. This is not necessarily what you would do, but just for for grins. Eh, grunt. I would say that that is a pass. Oh, yeah. That's what you're looking for. Shovel soft test 101. Right. So this is a perfect candidate for a rerun situation, right? Yes. We don't need to tear anything off. Maybe some flashings here and there, but we're, we'll kind of go over that when we do the prep. Yeah. So stay tuned to our future episodes, and we're going to actually show you how to prep the roof and then actually install the different systems. Absolutely. Yep.